Mayor said that you know that, but I wouldn't be standing up here doing my job if I didn't remind everyone. Make sure you're doing your good respiratory hygiene. You're washing your hands a lot. You're using hand sanitizer if you don't have access to a sink. Access to a sink. Um, you're taking those precautions to stay home if you're ill, and if needed, contact your health care provider. Call your health care provider and seek advice. And make sure that if you're in those high-risk populations, you have um, extenuating health circumstances, you're elderly, please be staying home um, uh, from the public and staying away from the public as much as possible. Again, like I said, uh, now is the time for us to really continue to step up our actions as a community. And one of the things that we are going to do additionally as the city of Sioux Falls is we are also um, building out our emergency operations center. We've had a planning group that's been meeting for some time here, and now we're going to actually, as of tomorrow morning, open up our emergency operations center, and um, it'll be a multi-agency team with our health systems to make sure that we can continue to work together to manage uh, through this time period and make sure that we're making really good decisions for the community. So, you know, we're, I don't know if lucky is the right word to use, but we're um, somewhat fortunate because we've seen what's been happening in other states in the country and we've been actually, you know, uh, seeing what's happened across the globe. And so we have some there's lessons learned, there's best practices already starting to emerge. Um, just recently we got some new guidance around mitigation strategies for communities which has helped inform us um, today uh, in making the decisions that we are. And so we are going to be able to uh, make a difference. That's what we do in Sioux Falls, that's who we are. Um, we can do this and um, I have no doubt we can make a positive impact um, for our community. Thank you. Uh, I just want to, one last point of clarification before we open up to questions. Uh, you know, a limit on events and saying we're, we're trying to put a, a cap on events of 250 people, uh, those are at city owned facilities. I can't uh, dictate if a church wants to have church or if other private gatherings want to occur. What we can say is that's the role we're taking and we'd encourage our community partners to follow suit because we think it's a best practice. It's a CDC recommended best practice. Um, so. Uh, I would encourage those who have events coming up like that that aren't in city-owned facilities just to think twice about them, uh, as we have. Uh, there's some tough decisions we've had to make because of this. Uh, there's some disappointed people because of this. Uh, but it's the right move based on um, what Jill had just mentioned in terms of a very proactive plan of response. So we have our partners, uh, Dr. Wilde and Dr. Erickson from Sanford and Avera with us as well. So we'll open up for questions that you have uh, for any of us. What do you need to see in the next 14 days to lift these restrictions? You know, I think one of the things we need to see is uh, a slowing of the, uh, the cases that we've seen in the state. So if we feel that uh, we're starting to level off for some reason, um, yeah, we can maybe take a look at it. But we're going to be very cautious on lifting those restrictions. Any more than that, Joe, we also have a lot of events that, uh, large events that are booked out further in advance and they're really watching us. So we don't want to um, uh, be overly in panic mode and uh, hamper some of the events that we have scheduled in our community into the future. So we're starting with 14 days and we'll assess from there. But we're gonna rely heavily on our uh, partners from the healthcare organizations and the, and the State Department of Health to tell us what the trending is and what they feel the community risk is. When you made this decision, did you know that there were going to, I mean, no one just had her press conference and said there were no new cases in the last 24 hours. Did you guys make this decision before that news was known? We did, yeah, we did. Where is your emergency operations center going to be located? Can you tell us about that? So yeah, I'll, I'll invite Jill up here as well to talk about this um, if you want, but our Emergency Operations Center typically is at our Law Enforcement Center. That's where it will be again uh, for this. That's an ideal location because it allows us to catch the media at our uh, public safety briefings as well for updates. Um, how that typically looks is there's city, county, uh, state agencies in there. Uh, we're going to have our healthcare partners that will have uh, staff there as well so that we're all communicating. We have a public information group. Um, and one of our goals as a city is just to ensure that we, one, keep the community safe. 
That's goal number one. But second, that we continue to provide the services we need to provide to our residents while dealing with what is now labeled a pandemic in, in the U.S. And so, Jill, I don't know if you have anything else you want to touch on on the, the EOC? Okay, so that's how we'll stand that up. All right, Mayor Paul Tenhaken here in Sioux Falls giving us the latest update as to how the city is uh, approaching the coronavirus yeah. and uh, kind of this ever-evolving situation. Right now, you just saw on the screen there, there is a state of emergency that has been declared. It is to run for the next 14 days, and at that point, it'll be assessed. Yeah, so what they're going to be doing as part of that over the next 14 days is that they're going to limit gatherings at city-owned facilities to less than 250 people. So that would be places like the Midco Aquatic Center, the Premier Center, the Washington Pavilion, the Convention Center, the Orpheum Theater, 250 people or more events at those places, they're not going to happen for the next two weeks. We've learned this afternoon already that the Sportsman Show that was scheduled for this weekend at Sioux Falls has been canceled and called off as a direct result of this order that came at the top of the hour. And there are a lot of other events. Uh, you just need to stay informed, whether it's uh, you know something at the local legion or, or your church. NAIA championships. Exactly. Yeah. A lot's changing by the minute. So uh, call ahead before you go anywhere if you are sick stay home. Uh, we're going to continue to have more on this as we go throughout the show. In the meantime, we have the latest on all of this as we know it. Uh, cancellations, closures, updates, everything. 12 school in the state for at least three weeks. Here in South Dakota, West Central and Wagner schools are closed for the rest of the week. Other districts, including Sioux Falls, are limiting activities and visitors. And Des Moines schools have also shut down mm -hmm. through the end of the month. Well, as Kevin Lands, Lauren Solak reports, South Dakota's largest district is also taking extra steps to keep students safe and healthy during this outbreak. Well, Brady and Angela, today the Sioux Falls School District announced it's reducing access to schools and suspending non-essential activities in an effort to reduce the spread of coronavirus. The district is working closely with the state health department. The city and state health officials have um, been in contact with them in the weeks leading up to, to this week and um, on a daily and sometimes more frequent basis than that. Um, and so they have been really helpful in the guidance that they have given us um, in handling this. The school district wants to remind people of the simple measures you can take to keep yourself healthy. We're actually, um, you know, working with staff um, to increase um, the number of opportunities students have to wash their hands. Um, we've provided staff with um, um, videos on hand washing um, information to, to increase that and to make sure they're doing it properly. Laura Rader, the principal at Lincoln High School, says custodians are also cleaning thoroughly each night with hospital grade chemicals. Well, it is still flu season, too, um, so I think we're pretty sensitive to making sure, like, doorknobs and the high-frequency areas are cleaned. However, I think that's something that we do normally because we do have a, a high population here. And there are still measures being discussed, though, including ways the school district might promote social distancing in the classroom. Superintendent Brian Maher wants to remind everyone that the district isn't alone in these decisions. We're getting advice, we're getting wisdom, we're getting suggestions from a lot of, uh, a lot of different places that, that we trust. The Sioux Falls School District is also limiting entrance into the schools to only students and staff. The district plans to keep the community updated daily with new information. Stay up to date with the outbreak on our coronavirus page on Kelloland.com. Thanks, Lauren. Well, we will continue to follow all the latest on the coronavirus in Kelloland. We're going to take a break. Jay Chobuck will be right back with a look at your forecast. And now the Sioux Falls Regional Airport is taking steps to sanitize thoroughly all public areas. Jacob Sersosimo continues our team coverage tonight. Jacob? Hi, Brian and Carleen. Now, this month is one of the busiest of the year at the Sioux Falls Regional Airport and the spring break and vacations. Now, with the coronavirus now in state, the airport is making sure to wipe down and clean everything thoroughly. The airport has been taking steps for the last couple of weeks to wipe down and disinfect all touch areas on a regular basis. That includes handrails, passenger seating, doorknobs, and water faucets, to name a few. Airline companies have been doing their part in the cleaning process as well. Provide additional you know cleaning especially overnight cleaning but you know when the flights are here on the ground uh, disinfecting of some of those common touch areas so 
So they're rolling out the, their own processes and procedures for, uh, nationwide for all of their flights. Now, although this week has been busy and flight numbers have been normal, they expect the number of flyers to go down next week. And I'll have more on this story tonight on Dakota News Now on KSFY at 6. Live at Sioux Falls Regional Airport, I'm Jacob Sersosimo, Dakota News Now. Jacob, thank you. A number of universities taking precautions against this coronavirus outbreak. Augustana University is extending spring break for students through Friday, March 20th. No classes will be held during that time. However, faculty and staff will conduct normal business operations. Classes are expected to resume on Monday, March 23rd. And just within the last hour, the South Dakota Board of Regents have extended spring break for all of South Dakota's six public universities through March 20th in response to the coronavirus. Phil is going to be back in just a moment with a check in your forecast.